Hi, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation and we have this channel, this video channel, so people can learn about marriage in a way that is quite different from your standard Western psychological stuff. We see marriage in a very positive way. We see it as a union between two soulmates and that it produces unbelievable benefits when you know what you're doing. And so this question is by those of you who are not yet married, or maybe you're a parent, but chances are you're searching for the answer. There's a lot of pressure. This question is, is it okay to have sex before marriage? You have free will. At the end of the day, you're going to make your own choice and it's good for you to make your own choice. It's good for you to dive deep into both your reasoning capacity where you lay out the benefits versus the detriments. You know, you do a well on one hand, on the other hand, and also use your intuition. Talk to God because you will be guided individually. Not all answers are the same for all people, but I'm going to give you some guardrails, you might say, and I'm going to explain things that you're able to apply with your reasoning, but talk to God, ask him. He'll, he'll answer you when you listen. He's not going to send someone to your door, knock on the door and say, oh, that question you were asking God, I've come by to answer. No, but you'll feel the answer. Don't reject it. Don't deny him. Hear it. And if you're strong enough, follow it. So here's what you have to take into consideration. And it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman, I'm going to explain on both sides. Okay. So when you're a man, it's a biological distinction. It's not a spiritual distinction. It's biological because spiritually you're a soul, you have a body, but you're a soul essentially as you are as a woman, you're a soul, but you have a body that makes you either a man or a woman. Now, the male female bodies are very different, it's set up by nature for the purpose, biologically, of creativity in the realm of procreation. We are driven by the same drive to survive that every individualized cell has. The drive to survive rules. It does. It rules the body. Does it rule us? Hope not, but it rules the body and it is constantly pinging the mind. We have to survive. We have to survive. Make sure there's food. Make sure you don't walk in front of that car. Make sure your boss likes you. All these things are coming from the drive to survive and the mind, because we haven't been taught this, does not go, oh, there is my body telling me I better be careful talking to my boss or I'll get fired. It doesn't go there. It just reacts. The biological drive for procreation is just under the drive to survive because if there aren't more of us, biologically speaking, we will perish as a species, but it's set up differently male, female. So the female is set up where her eggs can be fertilized roughly once a month. Other than that, she don't need men. And then during that period of time, her body is telling her mind, get pregnant, get pregnant. Your clock is ticking. You got to get pregnant. And if we have enough cultural protection, we can ignore those messages. However, it's there and you can't pretend it's not. And the mind will tell you, because it's reporting to the body until you take over, the mind is telling you, oh no, you love him. You love him. This is the right man. This is the right choice. You don't want to lose him. It's calculating on the subconscious, sub-subconscious levels. So it can trick you. The man, biologically speaking, is ready for sex anytime. Why? Because the woman is only ready once a month for a few hours. 
So if he's not ready all the time, you guys might miss your window and you won't have a baby. And then what? And I don't mean that. And then what? But that's how the mind is taking the body's extreme messaging, you see. We have to rise above that. We're souls. So here's the reasons why you don't have sex before marriage with someone who you're not going to marry. Big distinction. So I'm not going to draw the line. It is a religious judgment call whether you are going to have sex with your fiance or not. It's a call, it's a judgment call. If you want to adhere to your religious principles, then you don't. But here's what happens if it's just a boyfriend or something. The soul is the, let's call it the vessel of love. And there's a crude saying that when a pure woman opens her legs, she opens her heart. It may be crude, but it's accurate. If she opens her legs with any man, because womankind is pure, a much clearer envoy for God's love, if she, then what's going to happen subconsciously, there's going to be a protective layer put over her heart. And when she's finally with the right man, she won't so easily be able to open her heart to her husband. And that is a bummer. And that's what we're seeing. I don't mean to get political here, and I don't, and I'm not, but that's what's happening in the Western world, where women have so many multiple partners that it's like a business deal when they get married. And as the founder and director of the Marriage Foundation, we see it all the time. And we tell women, you have to learn to open your heart. And we even have a way of showing them and taking them in a process to get there and it ain't easy. So that's the argument, the best argument for not having sex before marriage, unless it's your fiance. <laughs> I have to throw that in. And what's my personal opinion? I'm not going to tell you. Because there's some things that we have to choose by ourselves. And if you are, I, I could tell you this, if you're going to be loyal to the teachings of your church, then you don't. It's that simple. There's nothing to think about or discuss, and it won't hurt you to put off having sex until you're married. So that's what it comes down to. Is it bad karma? I don't know. I'm not the karma cop, and I don't represent God. I'm just sharing on this. It's what I know about biological and how the soul works with the body and the mind, that I can tell you. What you do with it, that's up to you. And I pray that you are one day happily married. And when I say that, I mean get our courses, subscribe to this channel, learn about marriage so you understand so you can get the benefits of marriage because they are off the charts. You, when you have the right marriage, with the right understanding, you go through life floating on a cloud of joy. And that is no exaggeration. So again, I'm Paul Friedman. I founded the Marriage Foundation. We are here for you. God bless you and take care. Thank you.